Happy 4th of July and welcome back. This is going to be a very quick episode about Adolf Sachs and his early years of making large brass instruments. We're going to review it real quickly. I have another article too that I couldn't find. I'll just make it series two of this. It shows his early years also, but it also goes over how, well, how, how he tried to change the unions they had back there and the working methods and everything and try to change a whole bunch of things about the way workers worked in the industry, which created a kind of revolt against them in his early years. So that'll be a different episode. So right now we're going to get right to this. So as I mentioned, this is in the ITEA Journal, uh, volume 38, number three, as you can see, spring 2011 and the historical instrument section. This was a research article by, I believe someone getting their PhD. And let's go ahead real quickly. The research was from a Clifford Bevan, uh, Miss Eugene Mitrolia. Oh, yeah, she, she was the doc, doc, doctoral candidate at the University of Edinburgh. Anyways, this essay was about the sax tromba, and it shows some of Adolf Sachs's large brass instruments that he used to make before the saxophone. And this was for the 2012 Bevan Award. And so what we have here is Miss Mistrulia measuring out a large brass instrument. Look at that thing. It's gigantic. I don't know how tall she is, but look, look at the door in the background. The top of the bell is at the top height of the door. Let's pretty tall 80 inches is um over seven feet tall so if you're playing this thing it must be really tall <laughs> or you're sitting down but all the tubing apparently was 26 feet long approximately and she measured this out at the henry selmer paris museum and here I mentioned he was a belgian maker spent most of life in paris of course you know him for the saxophone but he was very active in the brass instrument making field also and developed what's called sax horns, which are valve instruments between cylindrical and conical made by Adolf Sachs from 1843 onwards. He got two patents from it, as it shows here. Brass wind patents. Interesting mentioned flugelhorns. Um, do I have a flugelhorn? I'm a, also a cornet player. I picked up French horn in about 1982-ish. Picked up the cornet soon afterwards, same fingerings and everything for the... It says a standardized same fingerings, which is nice thing about brass instruments, except, you know, a slide trombone, of course, which is different. <laughs> um, alternate pitches, because they get longer and deeper and darker. And on April 22nd, during open air contests at the Champ de Mers in Paris, Sach, uh, Adolf Sachs's band with his newly developed sax horns competed against Michel Carafa, the director of the military music one. And Sachs was the winner of the competition, which is very interesting. I'll let you just read more about here. But anyways, the narrow and wide bore sax horns in eight foot C or nine foot B flat. <laughs> and you thought a straight tenor is long, huh? <laughs> so bear tune groups are least populated because they're so big and heavy and stuff. Now, one of the things that I didn't re recall about, I don't know if this mentions in here, but France was known at this time frame for the um, mining and manufacturing of brass. So it was the common material back then to be used. You know, unlike like clarinets, they had to import the wood from uh, Africa. You know, the black, African blackwood. And of course, you know, France is good in southern France for the bamboo that is in reed production. So that's how a lot of these things got started is the bamboo back then seemed to be a good material for reeds and they started using reeds. And brass was a common material in France. They used brass for making things. Of course, it would be probably a little bit more difficult if their primary mining was iron, you know. <laughs> Try to hand hammer an iron bell. That would be kind of difficult. Anyways, the first appearance in Neurobor in this register is 1845 some saxo tromba patent called the saxo tromba baritone. Of course, keep in mind these are French words, so they're going to be spelled differently than when they're converted to American. It goes on, there were alto sax horns, baritone sax horns. 
but the the author here or the authors i should say show that the saxo trombos was a complete family so from i guess low to super low pitch <laughs> a seven foot tall tuba basically but anyways oh, there's only evidence they had of alto and baritone saxo trombos and the board profiles given as 1845 patent are actually still being used today, I guess. Anyways, they're made in C and B flat. Valves point upwards. Valves are perpendicular or parallel to the bell. I thought there were some, there were six valve that some forward pointing ones too. And the tubing formed two turns between the valve and bell section. And it was good for musicians in the cavalry. I guess if you're if you're riding a horse and carrying a seven foot tall saxo tromba tuba instrument, <laughs> I guess he needed a horse to uh, carry it. Oh, and look at this. Prevented the horse's head from being hit by the instrument's bell. <laughs> of course, as you're running through the cavalry, you're knocking off people running too. <laughs> So there's apparently few of these in existence. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, there were some six independent valve and pavilion tournée turn bells one and a movable bells. Now, movable bells you see a lot on sousaphones nowadays and also French horns, two-piece French horns and movable bells. None of the surviving baritones were, is made with a Perronet valve. Here's some diagrams, early diagrams. You can see the turns they have between the valves. This goes on and lets you read this part of it. Anyways, down here, surviving brass sax horns by sax are the second most populated group following the altos. A majority are equipped are four valves, of course. I mentioned that before. And the fourth valve need an extension to the lower register. And the fourth valve became a regular addition to the brass saxophone. It's also a common addition to euphoniums, and you'll see them on trumpets so, every so often and things like that. Goes on mentioning um, Sax's own method. Sax ones mentioned bases with five valves, which according to Sax had accuracy in the lower register, not achieved with the fourth valve. His last surviving catalog of the 1880s offered for sale bases of up to six regular valves. You know what? I think I have a copy of that in PDF somewhere. I may have make, make another video of that. And a small number of surviving and not new Sax ones, two of the Perronet valves. Only one has the Berlin valves. It goes on. You can read this right here if you want. Pause it and read it. Let's look at this horn here with a forward facing and six valves, three vertical, three horizontal position pistons, and a small bell so you don't knock over the person next to you. <laughs> look at all the tubing, how it just goes all over the place. Reminds me of a French horn. By the way, Selmer Paris has a French horn where the, the uh, I don't want to say the valves are backwards, but the tubing is like backwards. I, I can't, uh, I'll get a picture of that sooner or later. Anyways, this was a sax horn in, in C, B flat with six independent valves. Contrabass sax horns, 12 foot, 13 foot E flat, 16 and 18 foot B flat. 18 foot, I tell you. It says these looked similar to the Moretz and West Priest bass tubas pitched in F with five valves. Barely Oates, an article in Journal 1844, wrote that Sachs imported a, the tuba from Berlin and imported the instrument's compass. 
and he made it E flat instead of F and perfect his valve section. And add a crooks. And even barely out to praise those instruments and their sound qualities, which is superior to the, I have no idea what that even is. If you have an idea, put it in the comments. I totally clueless. Now we have another illustration here. Look at this. That's one big horn. Really tall too, isn't it? I guess to be played while seated or on a horse. <laughs> and this was the earliest known surviving contrabass sax horn in E flat in 1845. This is a picture from Edinburgh University in their historic musical instrument inventory. Photographs by Raymond Parks. There's no known surviving contrabass in sax in 12 foot. It's probably melted down for its brass content. <laughs> Anyways, uh, all his instruments are pitched 13 foot E flat. And for sale in both F and E flat. Not very many of them, I guess, were known to survive. Think of how big the case and heavy the case was. If it had a case. Let's see what else we have here. 1855, the E foot sax tuba, patent sax, 1852. Only two sax tubas are known to survive. Eighteen four three forty five patents that include any contra bass sax horns. And more information there you can take a look at. Here's a French article. I don't read French, so I'm no help here. But sax horn in B flat in B soprano. 55 francs. I guess that says cornets, cylinders, and pistons. Sax horn in B and in B flat, I guess. Sax troma and sax horn. Sax horn baritone. Sax horn bass, four cylinders in B. Sax horn contra bass in B for 100 francs. Trompette harmonic or in a saxophone, 200 francs. Wow. Saxophone back then was expensive too. Look at that. And that was 1848. In the 1851 International Exhibition, he had his contrabasses. And they this some jury, the you know, judges said it left the Ophiclides very far in the rear. Once again, if you know what that is, put it in the comments. I have no idea. I'll try to look it up. Uh, mentions the earliest ones in 1854. The early ones had more elongated form or fewer bends. Later changed, making them basically more compact and easier to hold. So they're not seven foot tall. <laughs> and there's no surviving contrabases by Adolf Sachs after 1867 or the contrabasses after 1868. Look at this big thing. Last known contrabass, sax horn B flat, made of Adolf Sachs in 1868. The Edinburgh Collection, once again. Notice the gigantic bore going up in just a small bell lip versus I think the early one had a large bell lip. The earliest surviving instrument with independent valves is the trombone. That's interesting. We all know as a trombone is a slide instrument, but you can also buy them with valves too. And I think Maynard Ferguson made one famous that had valve and a slide, if I recall back in the 1980s or 1970s. 
And you can still buy Valve trombones, I think. At least last time I checked, but it's, it's been a while. Anyways, the earlier surviving sax horn is in a private collection in Paris. Applied to valve system trombones in the 1859 patent. Amazing. And this is interesting. He, he would promote his own instruments through concerts, his own concerts that he had in Sax's Hall. I'm going to have to look it up. Maybe did he have his own concert hall? Huh, interesting. There, Kloss, interesting name there, right? Directed some extracts from Kastner's Livers Partitions played by a regimental band. And there, the intervals, he introduced a trombone and sax horn with independent valves. A lot of interesting things you learn, isn't that? In June that year, military festival students from Sax's saxophone and trombone classes played Muzar's orchestra in pre catalan Mentions another long article in July 1864. Continued organizing concerts in his hall where music was performed almost exclusively on the nouveau or new, I assume, instruments. Yeah. One trumpet, two trombones, bass, sax horns. It's one way of uh, promotion back then. There was no social media back then. There was no cameras, no TV. I guess there's concerts. Two duos for trombone and saxophone. You know, the trombone is the only instrument I've never played. Well, I've never owned. I've never owned a tuba either, but I don't want to own a tuba or a euphonium. But I played those before. I remember when I tried a trombone once. I got I had short arms back then in high school, so... When I had to play the longer sixth and seventh position, I had to turn right. <laughs> I can just see it in the cast. Clunk hit the person next to me. Anyways, um, August 11, 1863. Oh, the new trumpets, trombones, was to become obligatory in schools of the artillery and infantry bands. Wow, look at all this. So he really made an impact in the way the French music industry was because mostly instruments were used in military bands and everything. There's more you can read right here. Just hit pause. And next is the Bordeaux sax horns. 26 foot. That's a lot of brass, isn't it? In 1855 for the Paris International Exhibition. So such an instrument survives the Henry Summer Collection in Paris. And there's a reference to another sax horn Bordon in the catalog music at all sax. Entry number 200. Three valves down a tube and towards the bell in one meter. That's three feet, basically. And hasn't survived. Lower pitch. Prove that people of small height can very easily play on big instruments. And that is not the metal that gives the sound in the timber. Of course, you need a lot of air, too. Said it was a kind of monster. Ophicle. Okay, I'm going to look this up real quick. Ophicle. Oh, look at this. Looking at Wikipedia real quickly. Conco board keyed brass instruments invented in early 19th century France. To extend the keyed bugle. Huh. The keyed bugle. Look at that. More commonly known as a flugelhorn, I guess. <laughs> so that's what an off cleat is. Okay, there we go. Then we go on. Get Troy 1858 claiming his first one to make brass instruments for such enormous dimensions. Conclusions here, I'll let you read this. He deals sax horns, harmonious family instruments, and alternate pitches. Two instruments per octave, same fingerings, similar acoustic properties. And it goes on, surviving holes have Perinet valves, majority have Berlin valves. And there are lawsuits between him and his contemporary makers. So he adopted... Aspects of parade valves in the sax horns without altering rad radically the external appearance of his instruments. Well, they had lawsuits back then too, huh? 13 foot E flat, 
1850s, evolved towards larger bores, more conical bores. Anyway, as I mentioned, sax horn production dropped 1870s, 1880s, probably because of saxophone production. And it goes on that their extensive use of mixed wind and brass bands was a fact. And that's a couple end notes here. Basque Cometti, History, Adolf Sax, list of Adolf Sax musical instruments. So a lot of good information there. Anyways, that's all I have for today. A real quick overview of, of sax horns brought by Adolf Sax. Look at that big thing. Anyways, I hope you like this. Give a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you later.